where it says, this is the word of God. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, there's three narratives, three stories, if you will. And it all concerns with the story of something being lost. Have you ever lost something? I once lost my wallet, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. And when I found it, man, I just lifted my wallet high and said, I found my wallet, I found my wallet. Well, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15, there's three stories, and it all concerns a story of something being lost. Number one, a story of 100 sheep and one sheep being lost. And the crazy part of this story is, the shepherd leaves the 99 to go find one and it doesn't make sense why would the shepherd leave 99 and risk lose the 99 sheep to just find that one sheep that is lost and the moral of that story the point of that story is that sheep number that one sheep is very precious to the shepherd can i get an amen amen yeah that sheep is precious to the shepherd number two story there was this lady, she had 10 coins. And this is not just a quarter that you put in your pocket. This is 10 coins that she, she values with, his, with her life. They all represent something. They all are worth, you know, priceless. And one day, she lost the coin. And guess what she does? Until she finds it, she searches for it under her bed, under the couch, wherever, you know, she's just gone mad because that, of that one coin that's lost. And when she found that coin, she's happy. What is the point of this story? This story's point is this. Why isn't the lady sufficiently happy with the nine coins that she have left? Because that one coin is precious to her. Just like that one sheep was precious to the shepherd, just like that one coin is precious to the lady. And the last story brings us to the prodigal son. There's this two sons and a father. The older son is kind of, you know, uh, respectful, always doing his duty, always, you know, doing what the father asked him to do. And there's this younger son. Well, he's wild. He loves partying, he loves gambling, he loves women. <laughs> he loves the, you know, he loves the out, you know, he's out there, he loves the wild. And one day, this younger son comes to the father and guess what he says? He says, Dad, give me the portion that belongs to me, my inheritance. Well, there's a problem, you see, because in Jesus' time, you never go up to your father and say, give me my inheritance. That's equivalent to saying to your dad, dad, I wish you dead. But that's major disrespect if you ask an inheritance to a live father. You know what the father does? A reckless thing. He says, okay, I'll give it to you. And he gives his inheritance which, by the way, in Jesus' time, is land. So the father had to sell one-third of the land and give whatever that land was worth to the younger son. Guess what the younger son does? He gets the portion, he gets the inheritance, a lump of money, he goes to the far-off country and spends it all in wildlife. Gambling, partying, drugs, sex, Drinking, prostitution, everything, he loses it. And guess what? He's broke, dead broke. And on top of that, there's famine on the land. This is the story 
found in the book of Luke chapter 15. There's a famine in the land, so he's broke, dead broke, he's nothing to eat, and guess what? He goes to a farmer and he says, can I eat some of the pig's food? He's gone that low. He says, can I have some of the pig's food? The, the food that pigs eat. And guess what the farmer says? No. He can't even have what pigs eat right now. He's gone low. He's hit, he's hit rock bottom. And guess what he does? He says, he thinks to himself, Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I, I know I don't deserve this, but I'm going to return to my father. At least I could ask him to be his slave. I can't, I'm not worthy to be called his son anymore, but my father, in my father's house, there's plenty of food. I know this, so I'll go to my father and ask him to be one of his slaves. And then he stands up, he walks towards his father. And this is the cr craziest thing ever. The verse that I read to you. When the son, the prodigal son, returns to the father, the Bible says this. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off. And here's the question. How long is long way off? Because the father saw the son a long way off before even the son came to the father. So how long was the long way off? Was it one mile? Was it 10 miles off? Or was the father chasing the son all this time, never forgetting about the son? The moral of the story, the point is this, that to the father, that son is precious enough to wait upon him, even though he betrayed me, even though he wished me dead. He is my son, and I cannot forget about it. I cannot. And here's the story. Here's the point of these three stories. God loves you. Amen. God loves you. Amen. Because you are unique and precious to Him. God is searching for you. He is calling. Return to me. And I will return to you. Hey, hey. So today, I want to make an invitation, and I don't usually do this. If you're hearing God's word, return to him. If you repent, he'll make it anew. Mm -hmm. In Jesus, there's hope. In Jesus, there's change. In Jesus, there's life. There's no other way to heaven. There's no other way to salvation. We cannot save ourselves. God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to die for us. Whoever believes this shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. You are precious to him. God is searching for you. Return to him. If you want this, can you raise your hand if you're hearing God's word? I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand if you want to. Let's receive God. Return to Him. Let me pray for you. Father God, I pray for those who had ears to hear. Father God, they are returning to you. Oh Lord, you are God who values each and every one of us here today. I pray. I pray as they return to you, return to us. Show them that you are real. As they believe and put their faith in the cross of Christ, 